First off, we have, well, they all say, the Superintendent and Board of Education are proud to present the Pride Award for your efforts and commitment to quality and service. Something to roll about. Uh, our first one's Chris Montague. Uh, Pictures are also used by the Roseman News to help showcase our athletes and their achievements. Dina has also volunteered to organize all of our home athletic contest snack bars this school year, which include football, cross country, basketball, soccer, and track. Dina and her mother have done all of the purchasing, staffing, and maintenance of the snack bars, with 100% of the profit going to RHS athletic teams and ASB. Their hard work and dedication to our student athletes is truly amazing. school calendar is on uh, tonight's topic. Uh, RTA continues to work with the district in developing the school calendar for 2015-16, but unfortunately the teachers and the administration have differing viewpoints over the important aspects of the calendar. RTA representatives met with the board's calendar subcommittee and district administration on February 5th. Teachers from each of the regular education school sites asked questions regarding the rationale behind significant changes in the calendar. We offered suggestions for adjustments to the district's draft calendar that would minimize the impact of the proposed changes on the instructional program in the classroom. In short, we tried to have input into the structure of the calendar, which has a direct influence on the quality of education we provide for our students. The teachers have raised a number of serious concerns over the district's proposed changes. Number one, the start date has been moved up from a Thursday to a Wednesday, and the minimum, the minimum days, the first week of school, have been eliminated. The problem here is twofold. Our youngest students, kindergarten through third grade, have difficulty getting through a full day of school at the beginning of the year. Having a short week with minimum days helps those students transition from vacation back to school and allows them to be more prepared to learn. Also, teachers need a ton of time for preparation at the beginning of the year to provide the best instructional program and learning environment for the students. We already spend several days of our own time before the start of school to prepare for the year. We should also be given contractual time at the beginning of the year to work on our programs. Number two, 
there have been numerous minimum days added to the calendar, essentially one every week. Minimum days reduce teaching time and are disruptive to the student schedules and instructional programs of the teachers. Two years ago, we tried having increased number of minimum days in the calendar to be used for training, and the results were disastrous. As we developed the current calendar, the one consistent problem area wanted fixed by the staff was to get rid of several minimum days, and we did that in this year's calendar. Now the administration is putting them back and adding more. These minimum days disrupt, disrupt our teaching and student learning. Now please understand, there are some good uses for minimum days, but one every week is excessive. Number three, it is being proposed to increase the student day on minimum days so that release time is 60 minutes before the end of the regular day. The district says that this was done to provide collaboration time for teachers in professional learning communities, PLCs. Now this is a good idea, but 60 minutes is not enough time. We asked how long we would be expected to meet, and the response was 60 minutes. But that's not realistic. Many teachers have duty after school, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. After serving duty and using the restroom, the amount of time left to work together would be closer to 40 minutes. When we asked about this, it would have made sense for the administration to respond that the new release time would provide increased instructional time for students on these minimum days, but their focus was only on work time for teachers. Number four, professional development days have been created and placed in the calendar on two different Wednesdays. Now, RTA has always been in favor of meaningful and beneficial teacher trainings, but we asked why Wednesdays were chosen. The answer we were given is that this is how it's done in a couple of other districts, not its benefit on student learning. In fact, non-student days in the middle of the week are also disruptive to our instructional programs. It breaks the continuity of lessons, practice, and homework. And number five, other questions have been raised by teachers by the adding and subtracting of days on or around holidays. The district's rationale is the effect on ADA and revenues. While these are certainly important in the well-being of the district, we need to consider first the impact on, uh, on other students that do attend school on those days. Let's not focus on the 2 or 3 percent of the students that expand holidays. Let's concentrate on the over 90 percent of the students that are in school, ready to learn. Now the school calendar is as important and closely tied to student instruction as curriculum and other aspects of classroom education. The teachers of the district have the greatest investment in the structure of the calendar as, as it affects their daily, weekly, and monthly teaching programs. The teachers should have the most influence on the design of the calendar, not the least input. I've been told repeatedly that every suggestion we make in the district operations and decisions should be done only from the perspective of its impact on student learning outcomes. In our meeting on the 5th, with four experienced, successful classroom teachers, we did exactly that. Every question we asked and every suggestion we made was related to its impact on teacher instruction and student learning. Most every answer we were given for the changes proposed by the district was related to teacher meetings and ADA. We are willing to adopt some of the changes proposed by the district but we would like to see those changes incorporated into a calendar structured by the teachers. We have another meeting next week on the 24th. I will bring to the district the concerns of the teachers and a proposed calendar that includes some of the changes suggested by the district within a calendar that makes sense to teacher instruction and student learning. Thanks very much. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good night. Um, I want to start out by saying our current enrollment is 19. We have another pending student, so we'll be getting 20, probably this week. I wanted to talk a little bit about the students that we have that are enrolled in our program. Um, basically, we have students with extreme behaviors who have had difficulty being successful on the regular school campuses, as well as some of our students who have actually been expelled and are now getting a second chance. Um, the students have challenged the resources of our school district and agencies in East Kern <coughs> sometimes requiring these students to attend special education programs within the Antelope Valley, Bakersfield, and we've even had an out-of-state student. However, these extreme programs are no longer warranted with the replacement of our EV program. Our program addresses academics, behavior modification, social skills, anger management, and we provide counseling as individuals, groups, and for families now. 
Our program philosophy is positive reinforcement. Our reasoning for using this method is to prepare students for the real world, teaching them that with hard work, you earn reward. Positive behaviors are those which help students move along toward the goal of becoming well-adjusted, fully functioning adults. Our students have experienced negative consequences in the past which have had no effect on their behaviors. This strategy is adjusting our expectations so that the behavior that we expect is within the bounds of possibility for our students to achieve. Focusing on positive behavior places, replaces negative behavior and better perspectives and develops a more accurate impression of the whole student. It allows the teacher to emphasize strengths and help students overcome weaknesses. The teacher awareness of positive behavior will set the stage so that those behaviors can occur and teachers will respond in ways that make these acts of positive behaviors occur more often. And we are seeing that on our campus. Our students are daily behaving more appropriately and we're seeing less and less of the negative behaviors. Our site celebrated President's Day and Valentine's Day last Thursday. Our students were allotted a long lunch for positive behavior. They played music and games in the reward room. We all ate pizza and ice cream. Um, the students were very happy and appreciative and they really, really enjoyed their day. Um, and otherwise, we are currently preparing for Smarter Balance testing, and that is about it for us today. We're going to start with our basketball team. Our basketball team uh, finished up play, and our, our seventh grade boys team won the league championship. That was quite an impressive feat, considering they're competing against schools that are much larger, and draw up on much larger talent pool. They won their first round playoff game, but lost their, their second round playoff game. So basketball is finished. Soccer has started. Our boys played their first game today. Unfortunately, we lost 7-1. to one. Um, Next week, our, our ASD will start the community discount cards. Those go on sale, and they're $10 a piece. And they include discount to, discounts to local stores and businesses. So if you're interested, contact any uh, the, the cell or the opportunity to sell is open to all tropical middle, middle school students. This is the school-wide fundraiser. We'll be rolling that out next week, and so um, we'll try to get by the district office to uh, sell some cards. Maybe we can even sell at board meeting. <laughs> Can't keep the deadline for reserve spots has passed, but we are still accepting sign-ups until spots run out. Our avid tutors. Um, will start tomorrow. These tutors, they're, they're adult tutors, they've been hired by the district to come in and assist with, uh, specifically with our AVID classes. And they, they take requests and they work in small groups with our AVID students, but they'll also be working with uh, recommended, uh, teacher recommended students who need help in the core subjects. So we're really excited to have them, they're seven. The interim testing has, uh, is, we're in the midst of interim testing. The sixth grade has finished, and we are, we'll be starting our English interim testing tomorrow. We've had, uh, I'd say most, most of the testing has been successful. We've had some minor glitches, and I, I, overall, I, I don't know all the problems yet, but overall I'm, I'm pleased with what I've seen so far. I was able to be in a couple of classrooms when we rolled it out, and they were the most needy of all the classes, and we still got through all the getting all the kids online and getting them tested. And uh, the teachers have been really good about it. So we'll be setting our schedule and, and getting prepared to, to administer the real tests within a month or so. The attendance, the January attendance average is 95.707%. That's up from last month, and our enrollment is holding steady at 6.5. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Currently at Rare Earth, uh, enrollment 70, enrollment at Abraham Lincoln is 107. And I'm going to briefly talk about WASP, but later on I'm actually going to be giving a little report on the WASP process. And it's nice because two of our teachers are here tonight, Mr. Martell and Mr. Mr. Montague. But we are having an initial WASP visit on March the 5th which we're excited about. It's going to be a short visit. We're getting prepared, though, for the 
full self study, that's what that will be next year. And uh, Mr. Roney um, has been extremely helpful throughout this process. He's done this before and he's been helpful um, in helping all of us um, do what we need to do. Um, we've we've had eight we've had eight large of these our school school wide learner outcome SLLs posters made by um, over at Roseman High School. These are all placed in our classrooms with the mission mission vision statements. And it's interesting because when we're, I mean, I'll, these things, it seems like they're kind of sometimes kind of a silly thing, but really it's been good. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, how we've actually been working with our students and understanding the, the purpose of these school-wide learner outcomes and um, having these goals in their life for their educational um, and personal uh, future. Students, we have um, been working with students in completing assignments uh, related to the school-wide learner outcomes in our advisory period. Uh, we are preparing our rooms by decorating them with student work. And on February 6th, I had the opportunity, on the opportunity to go to a WASP training. And next week, on Sunday through Wednesday, I will be going to on a WASP visit myself uh, at, to another uh, continuation high school in San Bernardino. And I would like to thank Pete for getting food for us because we've, we've had a couple of WASP meetings and Mr. Ernest likes that. It took if he knows the food's there. He didn't know this last time though. So we were able to have enough for the parents. <laughs> so, but we, we've had uh, both times, Pete has gone to Costco, been delivered the food, very appreciative of them. And uh, we've had good showings with our parents and students at these meetings. They've all been very, given a lot of helpful su suggestions. Uh, definitely the curriculum this year, I've talked about this before, has been more challenging. We require, we're trying a little bit more. Uh, you know, that's the purpose of, of getting accredited. We're adding, students have to turn in projects, they have to do tests. And, but it's neat to see kids complete credits. It's more challenging, but kids are stepping up and they're doing it. We've had two students recently uh, graduate, finish, and it's neat to s have the other students see these kids completing this. Uh, we had one student, he's actually completed, he's already enrolled in uh, 12 units at AB, at AB High School, I mean AB, AB College, and he will, he'll, be attend he'll be going to the Navy. We'll be having Cassie, uh, Cassie testing for 10th graders and 12th graders in March. Uh, one more thing, uh, just talk a little bit about our school culture. I think one thing that we've been doing, and I know that they were doing other, other programs last year, I know that KD was a big part of that, with uh, having um, awards for students, which is always very positive. But we've also been doing that with the Student of the Month program, and it's amazing how excited these kids get about being awarded. And I remember uh, recently we had a, one of our students, he first came there, he wasn't doing very well, kind of slacking off, starts doing work, and so Mr. Mr. Bartell gives him an award for most improved student. And, and when he said his name, the kid was like, me? It was complete, like, like, completely dumbfounded that he actually got an award, but it was neat to see that. And I think it's very motivating for our students. Another important thing that we've added to, um, I think it's helped with our school culture, is the art program. Um, Heather Conklin has been coming. I think we have about 20 students participating in, the, in it, and it's been excellent. Very appreciative of her coming and doing that. Uh, it's a very good program. She makes it very interesting. She has cool little videos. It's not boring. I think the kids are getting a lot out of it, and really appreciate her efforts in doing that. I think that's about it for now. Thank you. All right. So basically, um, our attendance rate is 96.91% with 745 students. And Mr. Roney wanted to share that there was a few students designated SPED that went to Lancaster and Mojave. Oh, uh, positive behavior system, you're, you're seeing a direct result right here. 
with what Ms. Taylor was sharing, the positive behaviors, it really works. It really does. Okay. So ASB, clubs and booster and organization at Roseman High School. We have been uh, updated that the mural artist is supposed to come and uh, add on to our picture to uh, our Roadrunner and uh, different art, uh, pictures that he's going to be painting outside of the school has already committed to over spring break. That's what he says. Okay. <laughs> also, thank you, thank you, thank you for the Rooter bus, Mr. P, for approving the Rooter bus because you're our business manager, right? <laughs> oh my God! I was told to say that. Okay. But it was awesome. It was cool that we uh, went to Kern Valley. And we basically, our students filled that bus up. And actually, the principal told us that um, he came up to me and goes, uh, Mr. Ernst, are you the administrator here? I said, yes. I said, well, uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but I hope that your Rooter bus comes in the next 10 minutes because I'm going to have to tell them to, to not come in because of the numbers in the gym. And I was like, wow. Well, you're going to say that, I'm not. <laughs> so I kind of said, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I'll be here, that's all. And so, but we luckily we got them all in, standing room only. It was cool, it was loud, it was awesome. So thank you for allowing us to take the Rooter bus. There was one person that was the most rowdiest person that got a complaint. You. It's not Anna. <laughs> it's our Mr. President board member. I wish I could record of the things that he was saying. And the principal comes up to me and goes, who's that guy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, but anyway, it was a fun night, wasn't it? Mr. Reader. It was very fun. And we won. That's right. Uh, also, moving on. Department chairs were provided information on getting benchmark up and running uh, to coincide with the, guideline, uh, uh, the pacing guidelines that the state's creating uh, in our curriculum. And also, uh, Ms. Roney presented uh, the CCPT, the California Career Pathway Trust Grant for Murdoch. Is it Murdoch School District? Murdoch. That's the Murdoch. Murdoch, sorry. I don't know Murdoch came in there. <laughs> anyway, uh, they passed, uh, they approved this presentation and they want to join us in our uh, Career Pathway Grant. Also, uh, Mr. Roney received a phone call from the President and Vice President of Saracosa College and they both wanted to also join in in the possibility of coinciding with, with Saracosa also, along with ABC and some of the other colleges that we're connecting with in our uh, grant. Uh, we just finished the basketball sponsor night with BHE for the scoreboard, uh, score table donation. Also our AB86 adult education grant. Uh, final meeting and submittal is this week. Uh, in addition to Tulare, is it Tulare High School? Is that how you say it? Larry High School uh, District Superintendent and uh, Assistant Superintendent spoke with Mr. Roney also and wanted to also <coughs> look and visit our campus next month in March to visit our AB College campus and to see how we're doing that and uh, combining it with our credits for our, our seniors and all our students that are going to ABC uh, and getting credit and high school credit, college credit. So. Uh, that's a good thing right there. Also, soccer team should be almost done, but they made the playoffs, so we don't know the result of that. Did you mention that? Uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You are awesome. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And then our basketball team made the playoffs. They are, uh, we're planning on having a game next Wednesday. We don't know what time or where. Okay? And the scoreboard for our gym looks awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, uh, college course are underway at our school Score this week. What's that? Score table. Score table. Thank you. He was a this was all like scratch, so. Red ball gives you wings. All right. Last thing. Last thing. Uh, so college classes are starting now. Uh, our kids are enrolled 35 students. They're at least taking one or more classes uh, at ABC on our campus. Also, Mr. Weinstein, you must have missed your flight. They waited for you for the last second before they loaded the flight. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thank you. It was so much fun that we're planning another one on March the 6th. Um, so as soon as the weather cooperates, because we had such a large crowd, we're thinking about moving it outside so that we can accommodate more families and we'll be able to have just more of a fun and family um, themed kind of night. Um, also, for next month, what we're planning 
is the PTA is planning a bites around the world. Uh, this will be a multicultural celebration where families will be invited and they'll be able to sample at, I believe, 50 cents a small plate, different dishes, offerings from around the world. Um, at Roseman Elementary, we have a lot of different cultures, a lot of different um, yeah, I guess cultures, nationalities that are represented, and we thought this is the time to celebrate that, because we're one big happy family at Rosemont. Um, also, our students are very excited, because they continue to learn new things and to better prepare to move up for next grade. Our third and fifth grade students, as you've already heard, they're working diligently and very hard on their interim assessments in preparation uh, for the Smarter Balance tests, which are going to start in roughly about a month. Um, I know the first time that our third graders went in, they had never seen this before, and they were really scared. And they just thought it was totally hilarious. We told them, you know what, this is an interim test. It doesn't count. It's not going to show up in the newspaper. Just have fun with it. And they got in there, they started to play with it, and now they are very, very proud of themselves. The first day, it took them 20 minutes to log in. They have it down to five minutes now. So they are, they're starting their stuff around the campus. They're really excited about that. Um, also, the whole school is working on improving attendance so we can all go back to a Jet Hawk Stadium to be recognized on the big screen. We had an opportunity to do it last year. We're going to do it again. Um, I believe Kaboom is coming out right before we start testing. So as soon as we get confirmation from the Jet Hawk front office, we'll let you know when Kaboom will be down here. You can come down and shake your uh, tail feathers with us. Because <laughs> it is a fun, fun assembly. Um, also, the kindergarten class is um, having a fundraiser tomorrow night at Foster's Freeze to raise some money for their field trip. They asked me if I could include a flyer to you. If you stop by tomorrow night, the flyer you present the flyer is from 4 p.m. to closing. The kindergarten classes get a percentage back with your help pay for us to go down. I believe it's Aquarium of the Pacific again this year. Other than that, things are going great. We're rocking and rolling as Rockin' Robbins and having a great time. Thank you. Good evening. Um, our current student enrollment is 825. Uh, we do have five students pending. Um, our attendance for February is 93.7, so I'll say 94 percent. Um, student of the Month Awards for February we were held on Monday, February 9th, um, and in March they will take place on March 9th at 8 a.m. Uh, February 12th we had our lunch with the principal for eight of our 435 perfect attendance students for January. Only eight got to come in, but they are actually trying to leave. So they're having Valentine's party. <laughs> so, yeah. so they're just sitting there watching the movie, like, what time can I leave? So, <laughs> they were excited. So. Um, PTO has uh, monthly meetings. The last one took place on February 3rd at 6 p.m. Our next one will be on March 3rd at 6. Um, PTO puts on family nights every month. Uh, this month we have our sweetheart ball on February 20th at 6.30. You have a flyer attached to your agenda there. Um, we will have DJs, pictures, and refreshments. It starts at 6.30. It'll go till 8.30. Um, school site council has been working together and we're still um, meeting every month and trying to get things done. Our next meeting is on the 24th of February at 3 o'clock. Two of our third grade classes went to the Science Center today and our other classes went last week. Um, our interim assessment started last week on the 9th and we've been running pretty smoothly thanks to Tim. He's been there, he was there every morning making sure that everything was going good and with the exception of the internet going down last week for <laughs> half of the day. Other than that, we've been, we've been running smoothly. Um, we'll, we'll be concluding our Pennies for Patients on February 20th. For um, Every year we've been raising money for Pennies for Patients, and if you don't know what that is, it's um, for leukemia patients. So that'll be finishing up on the 20th, and that's it. Oh, and Kaboom is coming out to us on the 24th, so next week, 8 o'clock in the morning, Tuesday, Kaboom will be there, and, and we will be doing our attendance. Okay, next week. Uh, groundbreaking, and so the first part will be getting up all the windscreens and um, starting to remove dirt. So that will be done uh, starting Monday. Um, again, it's a 120 day project, and so we're uh, hoping that um, we'll, it'll, it'll uh, go out without a hitch and we'll maybe even get done within 90 days. Um, 
Also, we are at DSA right now with our district op temporary district office um, footprint and uh, lease designs for our buildings that we will have over there. We're going to be doing portable buildings, and so all of that has gone to DSA. We're waiting for approval. In the meantime, um, uh, we are meeting with uh, all the utilities and, and working on the infrastructure, um, as well as we are bringing two of the buildings from here uh, once we move the DO, and they will be new offices for the transportation department. So we'll, we're working on that also. Um, and that is it right now. Thank you. Um, from um, the district superintendent for Tulare uh, School District, but from the county superintendent also. So not only um, is the district uh, for Tulare High School District um, attending uh, or just the, the county is sending the county superintendent as well as the um, associate superintendent of education for the county and the associate superintendent of career paths for the county um, to come and look at what we're doing at RHS. Um, and of course, that alerted our county district <laughs> superintendent. She'll be down there too, I'm sure. Um, or she'll be sending her team. So we'll, we'll be having a lot of visitors, and, and it's a testament to the um, high school and what they're doing there that other counties as well as other districts are going to be visiting and um, doing, um, you know, hopefully taking what we've learned and our successes and taking it back to their district. So it's really a nice way of rewarding us and, and you know, showing them we're doing a great job. On March 3rd and 4th, I will be up in um, Sacramento meeting with um, Tom Torlickson as well as a number of assembly people on some of the proposed uh, uses for the budget, the governor's budget. Since they have um, extra money, they are taking input and uh, the county, our current county, has elected six superintendents to go up and talk to the assembly people as well as Tom Torlickson and they've asked me to um, attend. So I'll be up there on those, but I'll be back for the board meeting on the board. Um, and uh, Cheer will be um, attending a competition this weekend for uh, our cheer team, and we'd like to wish them luck. Um, it's a, going to Vegas, and it's a big national competition, and so um, it's nice to see Cheer uh, getting into the competitive uh, sports as well. A um, couple of things, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, Cheryl's ED program. Um, some of the things that are not well known is um, ED students have either medical or uh, mental health issues, and most districts do not have a place for those students. They fall outside the parameters of our special ed classes, um, as well as um, being fully included. And what ends up happening with most of these students is they get sent to facilities outside of school districts to specialize in ED. For us, our CELPA, as we've found many, many times, is Kern County, which means the facilities in our CELPA are Bakersfield. So that means these students would be transported for an hour and a half to Bakersfield. And you can imagine, um, you know, an ED student, English and disturbed student, locking them in a car or a transport for three hours a day does not really help them. Um, uh, we're one of the first in Kern County to have our own ED program. So, um, and it is a wild ride. It is um, something that uh, I have to compliment Cheryl and her team of, you know, just kind of seeing what works, trying everything possible, what works. And, and for the most part, a lot what um, is also not understood by the general public is the positive reinforcement is really the only way we can curb behavior or to um, reinforce positive behavior. Disciplinary action, suspension, as well as expulsion, usually cannot be done because of CDE regulations of if a person is a specialized student and we determine that their behavior is because of their medical or mental health condition, then that's something that we can't do. So our only option would be, if we didn't have this program, to just ship them out of the, the district to, to somewhere else where, they, where we would have no control over their ability to be a part of society or whatever. So it's something that we're seeing, Leanne and I are seeing close up, because obviously it's right here. So we not only see, but we hear on a daily basis what goes on over there, um, whether we want to or not. So um, I think that that's real um, important. I also like to compliment the high school on their grants. 
Um, we are now up to $1.5 million a year for um, hopefully at least five years in grants. The consortium that they're building right now is for us to be the main fiscal agent on a $15 million grant. And by being the main fiscal agent, by getting the college and stuff, we keep 10%. So that's $1.5 million right off the top, one grant to our, for being the fiscal agent. So these grants become very important in the college arena where I was at. Um, for instance, Ventura College was one of our big grant colleges that, that I helped run. And they have a um, $60 million budget for, that they get from the state, and they have a $140 million grant budget every year. So they use $140 million a year in grant money to run their programs, and only $60 million for actual just regular classes. And so what we're doing is, <coughs> a year ago we started actually making friends and going to meetings at junior colleges, because they're the ones that get all the grants. And we became part of a consortium where we have been a part of five different grants that have been given to junior colleges, but we are associated with them, so we become members of the consortium and we get money out of the grants. This is the first time that the junior colleges have suggested that a K-12 unit actually be the lead people on a grant, and um, they will actually be part of our members. So we will actually run the grant and the colleges will actually be part of our grant as well as other districts. We're trying to get the surrounding districts, Muroc, Mojave, Tattoo, we're trying to invite them to be a part of the grant and hopefully take advantage of some of the um, additional funding that they could possibly um, do. Um, and lastly, I'd like to compliment Mr. Holmes and his team um, on the loss accreditation. It's very, very important for our school district that every educational facility or edu educational program is WASC accredited. Our alternative education has been um, around for a very long time, and a lot of people have dedicated years and just hours upon hours of their own time and um, years and years into the program. But if a person graduates and gets a diploma, and the diploma is not WASC accredited, it doesn't do them much good. And although we have had incredibly dedicated people and had a lot of success, you know, times have changed. Where now the military won't take you without loss of accreditation. Um, we've gotten calls from beauty schools that say, we won't take the student because it's not loss of credit. So I think it's um, something that's very important, and I know the staff has worked incredibly hard, long hours to put together their binder. And um, from what I understand, uh, uh, Mr. Roney has a lot of experience doing loss of accreditation. And he seems to think that you know we'll get um, lost credit without much problem, with I mean, any problem. So that's something that um, really um, kind of neat, and we're real happy about that. That's it. Thank you, Warren, for doing so much beyond what's asked of you every day. Uh, that really means something that you guys really care about what you do. Uh, Cheryl's team here at the, with the PD kids. It's really neat to see that we're doing something with the kids that normally would be pushed aside. Um, I didn't know exactly everything you did over here, but uh, I'm glad we're doing something. Uh, and our loss accreditation for our uh, alternative ed, that is just awesome. I mean, I've been here for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I went to school here, so that tells you how long I've been. Uh, it's great to see you uh, with that. Next, uh, Mr. Stark. Um, thank you all for coming up tonight. Um, not only I'd like to think of, think back off of Mario and um, everybody that was nominated. I mean, we're not standing judge just to even be nominated to for the Roar or the Roar Awards. <laughs> That's a tongue kind of issue. Um, and so, thank you for all your dedication for our kids for. Our, other members of staff. Um, Mr. Holmes, awesome job. Keep it up. Um, looking forward for the West accreditation there. Um, kind of disappointed in Ms. Ruiz and Mr. Ernest. Um, we have one member going to CIF for wrestling, and no one said anything about my daughter going to CIF wrestling tomorrow. You, of all people, you see her every day. But that's okay, you know. I'll say it. 
his shirt. I'll tell you you forgot about it. No, it's all good. Don't worry about it. I'll tell her. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But, um, I told her to say it. No, you didn't. <laughs> I saw the notes. It's not the notes. No, but um, we have one, per one female that has made it to CIF, which is my daughter. So as a sophomore, she's going to be representing um, Southern Current in CIF tomorrow, which I'm very happy to It's at, I believe, from Bakersfield. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I believe so. Um, so, good luck. Um, with that, I think that's it. Mr. Oates, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody, all our award winners. It was fantastic. We even have a friend here that teaches at another school district. I see you sitting up there. And uh, I found out, Mr. Plumman, why not a professional golfer because <laughs> the 10 year olds out there hit farther than I can. But he did get hit by a ball. Player. I did get hit by a ball. I did. And you know what? A pro will sign it, give you the ball. This is an amateur. He said, I'm not giving you. I'm not, I'll lose a stroke. Forget it. You know, three bucks. Yeah. <laughs> but we had a good time. And, uh, but, and, and congratulations on my kid. I hope she does well. Yeah. And uh, I look forward to the dance on Friday. It'll be fun. And my 11 year old says I have to go. And I will go. So that, thank you. Thank you everybody for coming. Uh, it's hard to follow up this cast. For, uh, uh, thanks. Congratulations all the pride. Thanks for all you do and all the people that weren't nominated. I'm sure deserved it. Thank you. Um, congrats to all the sports. We have quite the run going now. TMS taking first. Um, I find that amazing after last year when they were getting beat by 50 points. And it seemed like every game. And some of those kids could probably six foot something. And, in seventh grade in Lancaster and Palmdale. Um, congrats to Michaela, congrats to the basketball teams. Thank you for the Reuter bus, that was awesome. Kern Valley didn't know what to do. I I'll send you an email. It was pretty fun. I mean, normally there's 10 to 20 people there at any given time, and when they saw the bus, what? They didn't know what to do when they helped out. It was quite a, uh, it was a rough game, but they made it through and they're undefeated. And uh, thank you to the calendar subcommittee, uh, Mr. Weinstein, Ms. Hargis, all the principals. Thanks for all the input and everything. Um, hopefully we'll have a finalized calendar on Tuesday and, you know, what's two, three months ahead of last year's schedule. And, We'll be able to work on 2016-17 quickly after that, and maybe another year. So, yeah. Like some school districts will have hopefully three years ahead already scheduled. So thank you everybody for your hard work. And with that, we'll move to consent. I do construction projects. The board has been, uh, chosen to participate within the California Public uh, Construction Act. And one of the requirements were to solicit in specific industry magazines, publications, interested contractors for us to bid. And so during the course of, we started in October, put out the publications and we received all of the different contractors indicating their licenses and what they were going to do um, from a variety of different uh, Southern California and Northern California as well. And so we have completed this list. It will make it easier for us, Molly, et cetera, to do our project. We can go right straight to that list and we do um, have different bid limits, and it gives us a lot more flexibility to do the projects that we want to do. So this is submitted for your approval, and it's just a, it's really an information. <coughs> this is a list that we will be using as a district that we will form. Thank you. Like Mr. Weinstein had said, uh, alternative education has been around for a while. Rare Earth has been since 1980. Mr. Bartell says it's been a little longer, but that's, yeah, that's as long as it's happened. It's been at a school code. 70s. 70s. So, and um, Abraham Lincoln, on the website, 1993, CD website, yeah. and so it's been around for a while. It's been here since the 70s. What happened? <laughs> CD just didn't know that. Right. They didn't know us, I think. It's like, so they've been around for around for quite a long time. And the point is that they haven't been accredited. <laughs> and that's what we're that's what we're doing. Um, 
So this year we're working on the initial, since it's never been accredited, I was talking about that before, so in two weeks from tomorrow, uh, Mr. George Bronson, he's a kind of a big wig and the whole uh, have lost accreditation, he's coming, uh, Mr. Roney um, has met him before, he's coming on the 5th, he'll be here for two or three hours or, uh, roughly, and so we're really trying to make the, the accreditation We're trying to do as much as we possibly can to be prepared for the full study next year. Uh, so doing a lot more, I feel like, than we even need to do. Because I, when I went to, when I recently went to uh, my own loss uh, training, I was asking questions about it. This is what we're doing. I said, oh, you, you should, you'll be fine. And so it's great because uh, Mr. Roney's like, it's, you, know, you want to you know, go above and beyond, you know, hit, this thing, hit this thing out of the park. So we've been working really hard, like Mr. Weinstein said, staff has been wonderful, Mr. Martel, uh, Mr. Montague who's here, and Mr. Shevlin, uh, all of our teachers uh, have been wonderful. They've done everything that you know, I asked them, like, can you do this? They're very willing to do, which is greatly appreciated. And it really helps the process go on. It's like you need a team to do something like this or it makes it extremely difficult. One thing that I learned when I went on my WASC training, what was, the, what was important, what the purpose of WASC is, and you think about all these things, you know, getting a credit is important, and obviously it's a hoop you have to jump through, but really their focus is student learning, student achievement, and, and so what you're trying to do is get students to learn, and that's when they come and, and visit your school, they want to see that students are learning. And when you go through all, everything you do to get accredited, you're going to make the school a better, a better school. The, the curriculum is going to be better. The students are going to be learning. Uh, and you can't help but um, have more student success. It's always a challenge, um, the idea of, of learning, particularly in alternative education. <coughs> But it's, a, it's, a, it's important, and all students can learn. And I think anybody who's been in alternative education sees that. Um, Mr. Bartell, Sandy, they've seen students, and you see students uh, be successful, and it's exciting. It's exciting to see them learn. It's exciting to see them. Sometimes you deal with some, you know, some annoyances. You're not gonna, we're not gonna, but you know, we like to see them learn. And like, it's amazing. I see some kids who are just not doing a whole lot, and all of a sudden they just you get that fire, and they start getting some, <coughs> Getting their assignments done, they get credits completed, and you're excited about it. And uh, and then we we acknowledge them for that. And we get those those student of the month things. Uh, for WASC, when I talked about this before, you know we're doing the A plus program, and that's what we're doing now. Who who knows in the future we may change and do other things, but but to to give it more uh, rigor, I guess you could say, make it more challenging. We've added the projects, and we've added additional tests, and we've required notes. And it definitely requires more effort on their part, but it's, it's neat when they actually <coughs> they, they see that they've accomplished something, they're getting credits. Um, and again, it's focusing them on student learning. Like I, we adopt, let's see. We adopted the mantra for our uh, school-wide learning outcomes, wild. And that's perfect for all Ted, huh? Wild. <laughs> so um, anyway, these are the ones that we have that are, we have larger ones, but these are the ones that are going in the um, classrooms. So warm and nurturing. And some of the kids said, warm and nurturing? I'm like, it's a goal. We'll get there. We'll, get there. we'll be warm and nurturing. So, Independent thinkers, leaders in technology, determined goal setters, and these are important goals. And so, as part of as part of um, them actually learning these things, we've actually been doing assignments. You know, some of them. You know, the other day I actually said, "Okay, let's let's get an essay," which you know that was a challenge. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we gave them some different assignments. Some actually was artwork and uh, things like that that related to school and goals. So, so they get an idea of what they mean, and that they start implementing them in their um, in their education. We 
have these posters and uh, the vision mission statement and all the eight rooms that that all did. Tony, great kid, he's made all of them. I gave him to him, I gave him the little uh, flash drive on Thursday, had them all done on Friday the next day. So I really appreciate him and his efforts. Um, let's see, I, I, we've also, as also a part of our WASP, we've instituted an advisory period at the end of the day. Um, it's a challenge at times at the end of the day, but there we're, fo we're trying to focus on things like the school-wide learning outcomes, SOLs, and we also implemented an ILP and tra transcript summary. Transcript summary already existed, but we included an ILP with it. And this, again, is like it's an it's educational plan for the students. The goals, this is what you need to take to graduate at this time, and those things are all the teachers completing with the students and revisit them on a regular basis. Um, Again, I talked about the student of the month program. It, it, again, it's a, kids like it. They, they get excited about it. You think that they would think it was corny or something, but these 16, 17, 18 year olds like it. We even had this one kid that stood up and gave a speech afterwards. <laughs> it was kind of cool. It's like, wow, he's a pretty good public speaker. <laughs> and uh, so we were um, pretty impressed, pretty excited. They, they really enjoy this. Uh, we've been having regular WASP meetings with our staff. And we've actually had some, and we've had some good, good meetings also with some parents and, and students. So it's cool to see, get parents there to get their input. We even had one parent who came and she's, uh, she enrolled her student, her son there, and he actually didn't have to enroll there. He was actually not behind. He was probably our only student that wasn't behind it at Rare Earth. <laughs> and uh, he. All of her family's like, why are you enroll him in a, in, a, in a continuation school? She said, it's, it's great. And he did great. He's, he just finished. And he's actually enrolled at, like I said, at ABC. And uh, he's got 12 credits. And that wants to, he's going to go into the Navy. But we've had a lot of very positive comments. We even had one of, our, one of the students that was there. He's not, he wasn't there uh, uh, last year. But one of the other students was telling him that was there last year. He said, you know, it's, it's, it's more challenging this year. It's uh, he thinks it's a little bit. It's improved. And it, you know, it's, it's been great. But I think with in, in implementing WASP, it can help and improve the student learning. Um, I'll, I'll sum this up. But I'll be going on a WASP visit this Sunday to the 25th. This is a full visit to San Andreas High School in Highland, California. This is really important. I know the summertime is like you need to go on a WASP visit. It's extremely important. And uh, I'm already learning a lot about the WASP process, as all of us are, but it's really important that I'll go and I'll actually understand everything that goes into it. So when I come back, you know, this is what, this is what to expect. This is what we have to do. And uh, so we're going to be prepared for our, um, our WASP, our full, the full study next year when we have to have a lot bigger, you know, book that we have to report that we have to turn in. <coughs>